Shalom. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So we see who's, you know, running the earth and covering the faces of the judges. Let's go to Job 30, 30. Job 30, 30. Job was talking. My skin is black upon me. Job 30 and 30. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burnt with heat. Let's go to Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Verse 5, I am black, but calmly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, but as the tents, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, I am black, but calmly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me, they made me the keeper of the vineyards. But my own vineyard have I not kept. I'm going to go to Isaiah. I don't want to go back to one book because I want to go through the books line upon line. Piece. Just a few things out of the book. Uh, Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream and had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. But you see, we read how the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. Which we were the Edomites. You know, if you follow the, mess the uh, messages, this is part eight. You will see where we're going. It won't seem like I'm just jumping into scriptures. All right, let's go. We did Song of Solomon. Let's go to uh, the book of Isaiah. And I've already told you before the people were named after the Lord. For Y-A-H, Yah means Lord. Y-A-H, like the Bible says, praise ye Jah, where there was no letter J before 1600. There was no letter J. So they might, they probably weren't saying Jesus because there was, the letter J didn't come till 1600. You know, I'm not saying anything negative, I'm just saying it was a Y, which was Yah, like Isaiah. So in other words, the name Isaiah, I-A-H on the end, was really a Y-A-H. So it was Isaiah, like you got Jeremiah. Because the people back then named their children after the Lord, presented them to the Lord, held them up to the Lord, like Isaiah. So it was Isaiah, meaning the Lord. Or Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Zechariah, you know, Zephaniah, you know. And E.L. meant God, like E.L., Samuel, uh, Nathaniel, Daniel, Joel, Israel, you know, uh, Emmanuel, you know, meant God with us. So, again, in Y.A.H., meant Yah, these are what the, the people named the names, you know, that's why you got Messiah, see, and Hallelujah, which is the highest praise to the Lord. Well, let's get it, Isaiah. Continue, line upon line, precept upon precept. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment, and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent the word into Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. 
and the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that that say in the pride and stoutness of heart. Okay, so we're telling you, you know, go down to verse 14. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and, and, and tell branch and Russia one day, the ancient and honorable. He is the head and the prophet that teacheth lies. He is the tell. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they are led of them. That are led of them are destroyed. Let's see where, see where all the people was beginning to. And Israel served these false gods and stuff as we talked about. Let's go to Isaiah 51, 51. You know, they cut Isaiah in half. The Bible says he was sawn asunder. They cut him in half because he was prophesying like he did. A child would be born. He was talking about Christ was going to come and redeem Israel. That's why even John the Baptist said, is this he that should come or do we look, look for another that should bring, you know, a restoration to Israel? Let's go to Isaiah 58 and verse 1. And it's all through the scriptures, but I just want to go line upon line. Let's go Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness it is of me, saith the Lord. Sometimes you just got to read that. It's folks going to rise up in error, coming out the dog on chops, not knowing what they're talking about. Isaiah 58 and 1. Look at Isaiah 57, 21. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. All right, now Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. I mean, cry out loud. Cry out loud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. You know? Spare not, meaning don't get all involved with people's emotions and their flesh. You're talking about me. You're, you know, it's so like, this is when the Bible's talking about the ignorance, you know what I mean? And you hear as you love them and they miss, oh man, it's, it's kind of hurtful. Because even Christ said, but the Bible say he was sent to his own and his own received him not. Still talking about possession all through, you know, and it's a shame because they're not really bringing us out in the Bible. Let's get it. Let's, 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 t let's talk about what Yah, what Christ going to do to him. Let's go up and go to Jeremiah. We're going to read it out the Bible. Jeremiah 23 and 1. Woe. Woe means destruction. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastures, saith the Lord. He said woe, meaning destruction, because a lot of these pastors are not bringing out the lineage truth of who we are. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whether I have driven them, all the countries where we were scattered, and will bring them again to their folds. And they shall be fruitful and increase, because we're going to one day be back in our land of Israel. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. See, everybody, that's why they're like, well, where is it? Yeah, because he's bringing the people together that's not necessarily in the temple. Yeah, we fell not to assemble, but he's bringing a different assembly, a real general assembly to bring the truth in the last days. That's away from these um, charismatic, and this is my Bible and all this. You know, according to Psalm 149, if I could get $149 out of each one of you in 149 days, you're going to get your blessing. You know, that ain't Christ. You know, that's you getting money in your pocket and then messing with people. And then, and then they wind up having religious spirits and then they start attacking the true prophets of the last days. That's bringing out the lineage truth. You know, they start, start hating them because a lot of them people are programmed to teach you to hate your very own uh, in the last days. The cause, divide and conquer and division. But look what the Lord going to do to them. So anyway, y'all see that. We, we go online upon line. Let me go back a little bit to Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Because you know Christ is the Lion of Judah. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth, the drought. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languisheth. They are black unto the ground. And the cry of Jerusalem is going up. They are black. And see, other versions of the Bible going to change black in the description of the people too. And I done read verses already as we started this particular message. Not that it's about color and being discriminative and hate like a lot of people 
preach and teach hatred. That's not my thing. It's just waking the people up from hating each other and being able to love people. Of course, does God hate? Yes, God is love, the Bible says, but he also hates. You know, he hates evil. You know, Jacob, I love me, so I hate it. There's a bunch of scriptures he says about hate, you know, but he's a just and holy God. And in the end, we're going to all find out. Then the people will say, but I didn't know. No, you, you're you without excuse. You did know because a lot of the last day prophets going to be slaughtered just trying to teach you and bring you back while you're hating again, you know. But it's all right because some of us are called to this, appointed to this death. The Bible says, through much tribulation, here we go with the word, tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of heaven. The scriptures say, through much tribulation. My God. Let's get to Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. We talked about the slave ships and all that in the other message. Jeremiah 16, 14. I said this one already. I'll say it again. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall be no more said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Meaning we're going to one day go back to Jerusalem, to Israel. Those, because the Bible also says all Israel is not Israel. So there's some, that's why they don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're not Israel. You know what I'm saying? And then we know those that are in Israel, if there's some that are just not the real ones. And we know that we brought that out. You know, so moving right along, you know, moving right along. Because you got some of these things. And I had a whole thing on this before, but it's like the spirit of sometimes bring you back to things um, in the new, you know, because there's still no private interpretation. That's why you read it right out the Bible, because they always want to argue you down, you know, and debate. And that's the lack of knowledge. As a matter of fact, I'm a, Obadiah chapter 1 is what you, I want you to read, but I'm going to go to Hosea 4. Just on that point I just made, I'm going to read it again. Hosea, H-O-S-E-A, Hosea. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. And it's going on to this day. There's a controversy God had with the people. Why? Because there, have, because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. Everybody's on this blab it and grab it, name it and claim it, favor, and all these things. It's religious, you know, it's really religious. I don't care, I still love them. I remember when I was like that. So it's just that, why are you coming against me? But it's the lack of knowledge, and we're, gonna bring, we're bringing it out. And we're trying to not be discriminating and hating. That's not my thing. It's waking up the chosen to stop all of this self-destruction. And, and murder and don't, and hey, we're going to get it. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. I'm in Hosea chapter 4. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. Can we just read about the gates languishing? With the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet, let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. You know what I'm saying? They're coming against the last day. Therefore, thou shalt fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. You see what I'm saying? Because you got the false prophet. Instead of prophesying, he prophesy lying. Okay? And then the classic verse, Hosea 4 and 6, my people, again, possession. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And that's what was happening. Because we was, you know, sinning back and forth. That's how we got kicked out of the land, sold into Egypt, wound up in the land of the north. Did we not just read it out of the Bible? You know. You can rewind it on your phone and read it, you know, and these are things they want to, it's like, all, all you're doing is reading out the Bible, you're not trying to, you know, and the Bible says it doesn't produce edification, in other words, it doesn't educate us on the scriptures, all this, all it is is a big argument of genealogies, well, you know, back in the day, when, you know, the first love, planet fell on the ground and the big bang theory and evolution they get into all this stuff and you're not even arguing you love them you're just having a simple diplomatic thing but then if we want to get bring out the sword of the scriptures then it winds up getting like that but you want to just have love 
Shalom.